in a bid to increase the value of wool and in turn the profitability of sheep farming, Ag Research has a program underway looking at the genetic factors that govern the structure of wool fibre. The hope is that, with the knowledge gained, sheep will be able to be bred with designer wool types for specific end users. Dr David Scobie explains. The Luster mutants have been around for a long, long time. We find scientific reports back to the 1940s about them. But we've never really got to the bottom of what causes that um, actual change in the wool. And it's a single gene, and we still haven't discovered it. The sheep with this mutation have a very shiny fleece, particularly when they're first born. And it completely lacks crimp compared to the other sheep of the same breed that they come from. Strangely, a lot of them don't have the um, incisors when they're born. Some of them do, and some of them develop them later in life. Um, they also have difficulties with their lungs, a lot of them. So uh, the, during embryology, the development of the skin and the development of the internal surfaces, like the gut lining and the lung lining, develop from the same sort of tissues. And so there may be some really deep development there, which is causing that um, screw up in, in the external surfaces. If we could find that one gene that causes that mutation and changes all of those things so dramatically, then we'll, we'll know where it lies and we'll be able to find the other genes that give us good wool quality and perhaps some of those other tooth eruption and those sorts of things. We've done a lot of the physical measurements and the other crew that I've been working with have done some of the proteins and done some of the scanning electron microscopy, but we haven't yet done the gene test. That's Sharon. Sharon was born in an October in the middle of the night. And she was really shiny and we were excited to find Sharon because it was the first one that we'd been able to produce on the research farm. Her mother was a felting luster mutant and she showed up. And it's just amazing when you see them, they're just so outstanding. Yeah, you can still see the luster creeping through even yeah, in, yeah. in today's conditions. So Sharon has a slight respiratory disorder. We did have some others which we think actually died from pneumonia or something like that because of these issues with their lungs. But if Sharon goes for a short run or follows you around the paddock, she will start breathing heavily. And on a hot day for a sheep, but on a warm day for us, she'll be breathing quite heavily. We're about five years of messing around with these sheep. We put the advert out to get hold of some a bit before that, and we've had a good response and good help from the rural community to pick up some of those animals. What we got hold of on Friday was a ram lamb. When you get a ram, you can produce a whole lot of progeny very fast, and you can get normal and abnormal side by side and use those. For the first four years of the trial, we hadn't been able to find a ram. What happens is, is that when you get a mutation, you get a radical change in the structure of the fibre. And you get also a, quite a radical change in the proteins that are present as well. So by looking at mutants in normal sheep, we'll get an idea of which protein is important and how they help develop the fibre as it grows. Ultimately, I think we'd like to have some markers we can say to farmers that if you particularly focus on these animals, we develop a gene test, for example, we could say, well, these ones favour this particular trait. And if we can develop that trait further, then they can, can help refine their breeding program. There's about 12 proteins that are affected by this. We have got the skills of an egg research and, and we have a good genetic knowledge of the genome now. So it's just a question of actually finding the right animals. At the moment, we're still trying to establish the connection between the proteins and the fiber structure. But what we wanted to do the next stage is to start doing gene tests and start looking for the actual cause of the mutation. So this is a scanning electron microscope image of normal fibres and mutant fibres. And the thing to note is in the normal fibres you get these kinks and flat regions in the fibre, whereas in the mutant fibre you get straight cylindrical fibres. 
So we've got this sample here, which is a lamb shearing sample from a luster mutant. It was that little ram lamb. The next sample that we've got is from an older animal. And you can see just, just even from this very small sample, it's quite matted and cotted and it tangles up. And then just for comparison, we've got a normal wool sample. Look, some samples have more crimp, some have more length, some have less crimp, but I think you'll see the difference between these two samples and that is quite dramatic. We've found the luster mutant genes in Suffolk, Merino, Perindale, Romney and composite sheep so far. Every now and then we'd come across a sheep like this one that we think, at the start of its life, it's a mutant. Then all of a sudden at lamb shearing time, it's turned into a normal Perindale in terms of its fleece. If you shear that animal, we came back the next year, only way we could identify it was from its ear tag number. So this particular mutation giving us lustrous fibres, we could use it in something like this. So this is, this is actually made out of mohair. This is a goat fibre, but it has the same appearance. Some people might be aware of the Stansborough fibres and they're making products like the elvish cloth that was used in the Lord of the Rings out of lustrous fibres. So you can use it for that. I'm not saying that everybody in the world is going to be using a granny's lap rug, but um, yeah, there's certain things you could use it for if you wanted to breed sheep like this. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.